So we did a review on the FX6300 a few months back, and our consensus was that it's still a pretty decent CPU for the money. But since the release of that video, newer, cheaper, and faster CPUs have come out from both the red and the blue team. So how does the FX6300 hold up in mid-2018? And is it still the choice for those who are gaming on a budget? So the FX6300 came out back in October of 2012, making it relatively old by today's standards. It's rocking the Vashira microarchitecture on a 32 nanometer process node, which is an evolution of AMD's earlier pile driver and excavator cores. The specifications of the CPU, on paper at least, seem pretty impressive for being in such an inexpensive package. Featuring six cores, but not really. Clocked at 3.5 gigahertz, 14 megabytes of total cache, and compatibility with the relatively inexpensive AM3 Plus socket. So on paper, this CPU seems great. Why isn't everyone using the CPU when they could get six cores for 70 bucks? Well, hold your horses for a second because on paper performance is a lot different than relative performance. So starting off with the Cinebench score, the FX6300 got a score of 385, which definitely isn't that bad, but it's not that great either. Comparably, my Intel i3-8100 quad-core processor got a score of 573. So from this benchmark, it seems like the FX6300 isn't that bad. Sure, it's lagging behind, but it's not that far behind, right? Well, moving into the Blender BMW CPU benchmark, the FX6300 completed the render in just shy of 15 minutes. <gasps> okay, Jake, well, what if I want to play games? I don't need a workstation for that. Well, our gaming benchmarks were variable and incredibly inconsistent. Our test bench consisted of a GTX 1050 Ti, 8GB of 1600MHz DDR3 RAM, and a mid-range motherboard that can easily be found for under $80. So me having used the FX6300 for nearly two and a half years, I went into these benchmarks expecting pretty much what we ended up getting. Battlefield 1 was unplayable and was constantly below 20fps in conquest mode, no matter how low the settings were. And while playing other game modes, the frame rate improved, but stutter made the game completely unplayable. Fortnite, the in-game that everyone and your grandma are playing, ran at an average of 59 FPS at high settings at 1080p. Minecraft, which is relatively easy to run with fancy graphics enabled, ran at 72 FPS with some pretty frequent stutter when chunks loaded in. So, yeah, from these gaming results, the FX6300 doesn't look too exceptional. But keep in mind that this is a six-year-old processor. For this long after release, it's still kicking and screaming for sure, but it's really starting to show its age when it comes to single-threaded tasks. Intel's Pentium G5400 and G4560 are, honestly, a more worthwhile choice and offers better performance. It not only is cheaper, but it's also part of a platform that is more modern and has a much wider upgrade path. AMD also offers newer, more modern processors for slightly more money. The Ryzen 3 lineup of CPUs are excellent choices for playing games on a budget and outperforms the FX6300. While yes, the Ryzen processors are more expensive, with the cheapest Ryzen 3 2200G coming in at around 100 bucks, the premium is honestly worth it for more performance and a modern upgrade path. So as for our recommendation, is the FX6300 worth it in 2018? Well, not really. With the release of faster, cheaper processors from Intel over the past few months, and the inexpensive Ryzen APUs, the price point that the FX6300 holds is now filled with better, more modern options. If you have an FX6300, the time to upgrade hasn't arrived yet, but it is definitely approaching soon. So thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video and want to support the channel, don't forget to leave a like and or subscribe, and don't forget to check out the description if you want to take a look at the FX6300 or any CPUs mentioned in this video. If you want to watch more of this type of content, click here for more videos. And thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.